So you've mentioned a lot of things about the differences between the European rotorcraft industry uh, and the American one. So can you tell us about some of the different challenges and opportunities that both of them face? You know, it's sort of an interesting situation. Both the Europe, uh, European militaries and the American militaries, uh, military air arms, were amped up considerably, especially in America, but also in Europe over the past uh, decade. And both of them are now facing something of a hangover. <laughs> now, if you were a believer in JMRT DFVL, you'd say, well, this might be an opportunity to take a tranche break, sort of build out what we're building now, then take a halt, have a bit of a procurement holiday, and then reinvent the wheel. Uh, the Europeans, I think they're sort of split. Eurocopter is saying, no, steady state, we're going to emphasize the civil business. Augusta Westland, by contrast, they think that there's something different out there a different way to fly. It might be more for the civil market for them or for parastatal markets, coast guards, what have you. Mm -hmm. But they are pursuing it, whether it's with their, their Project Zero, I believe, or their purchase of the AW609 tilt rotor concept. Uh, they believe there's something out there. I think Eurocopter did with the X-Cubed, but not aggressively enough to really make that a, a manufacturing program anytime soon. So you're looking at very different perspectives on the market. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to think if I were a US prime right now, I'd say, got to focus on exports, think more about civil, especially for Bell, and most of all, think about industrial restructuring because probably three primes is the wrong answer given the market size. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more specifically about how the U.S. rotorcraft uh, industrial base relates to its global competitors? You know, Europe long ago um, successfully rationalized. It wasn't pretty, as they say, um, you know, uh, 10 mergers uh, give the other two a bad name, you know. it's. Uh, Augusta Westland happened, and of course Eurocopter happened all between uh, 10 and 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the U.S. still has three primes, Europe has two. Uh, now during the last decade when you had such strong defense budgets, especially for rotorcraft, especially with supplementals and OCOs and what have you, three was more than sustainable, but given the differing expectations of aerospace companies for return on investment, uh, I think you're going to see a shift towards two in the U.S. It's really just a question. Mm -hmm of what that looks like. Can you also tell us a little bit about you know, the different relationship that, uh, between the military and the civilian uh, industrial bases for rotorcraft and like the dynamic? You know, in Europe, uh, they've always had different expectations for aerospace companies, and probably the biggest is that they're used to accepting a lower level of profitability and return on investment. As a result, they've been far more aggressive about uh, getting into the civil market about developing new civil products. And Eurocopter and Augusta Westland have maintained number one and number two status in that business for the past better part of the last decade. Bell has slipped to number three, of course. Now, of course, Bell is realizing that the future can't continue to depend upon the Marines all of the time mm -hmm. buying everything they build. So they've become a lot more aggressive about new civil product development with, with some decent promising results. But still, it's going to be a long way back uh, getting to where they were. And um, lastly, you talked about a key challenge, which is resuming military export uh, a market growth. So can you tell us a little bit about some new innovative, fla innovative platforms that might overcome these challenges? I think the key to understanding uh, the military export market is that it's even more cost sensitive and, and value mm -hmm. uh, proposition oriented than the U.S. market. Yeah. You start trying to sell them on a tilt rotor, and well, you'll get exactly the results we've gotten over the past mm -hmm. 20 years trying to sell tilt rotors abroad. It doesn't work so good. Uh, even Sikorsky, I think, has realized the future is actually with value pricing. When they made the transition from the Blackhawk, uh, limited to the Blackhawk mic, uh, there was a four or five million dollar price increase, which a lot of customers said, mm, I don't know, which is why they came up with the, the concept of the S70i, the international version. Mm -hmm. I guess, long story short, the key is understanding customer needs in terms of pricing and coming up with a really good value for money product. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this interview. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye.